This is the best strike indicator setup that I fish. I have been fishing this uh, shortly after I started guiding, almost 20 years ago. So this is a yarn indicator system. I started using yarn strike indicators with a rubber O-ring, and then I found that when I cut my leader and transitioned aggressively from, say, a butt section to tip it, that it hinged really good and, and sank really fast. And now I've really got this dialed in. So what I do is you can run a variety of different yarn indicators. Uh, you could use a yarn strike indicator with the rubber O-rings. Uh, what I like to do is actually I will often, I'm just going to abbreviate this. Um, I'll just put an overhand knot in my line like this, okay? And I will shove yarn in there and tie it shut. Um, that's one way to do it. The best way to do it is to use a New Zealand strike indicator tool. For 19 bucks, you can make maybe 100 strike indicators. So there's a variety of different ways to put that yarn in there. The bottom line is the yarn should be delicate, light, and buoyant, and the nymph should do the steering. Think of this as a feather, okay? A feather is going to follow the fly. The problem with most strike indicator setups and most people's nymphing is they've gotten in a rut, and you probably have too, using thingamabobbers and large indicators and heavy flies and split shot and not being creative. What this allows me to do as a guide and an angler is I can run a delicate light nymph setup. I can run a short line because it hinges with that Rio tippet ring in there. I've tied a non-slip mono loop to that Rio tippet ring and that allows my fly to sink very quickly at 90 degrees and I can suspend my flies most of the time and then I get instantaneous feedback on this delicate indicator because my fly is in direct connection. Instead of hanging out at a long angle like this where the fish might grab it and there may be slack between the two, this gives me great feedback. It also allows me to hold very drag-free drifts in softer and often more challenging currents where a thingamabobber or a corky or a big indicator is going to float way ahead. Something you have to know about nymph fishing is the indicator on the, the surface is going to be moving about twice as fast as the fly should be in the bottom half of the water column. So I kind of want you to digest that for a second. The fly should be moving about half the speed. What happens with light, delicate yarn is the fly is floating slower and it actually can slow this down. Whereas a highly buoyant or heavy thingamabobber type or an airlock indicator will float much faster. Now there's still a time and a place for those. When you're, when you're pitching big stonefly nymphs or buggers and heavy rigs like that, that's a great idea. But I find that most people don't appreciate some of those softer edges and they don't have as much success there because they're over indicated for most of those areas. Now to finish up on building this, what I like to do is I like to take a tapered leader that is no longer good for dry flies because maybe the tippet has broken back up a little ways. I run it down to about a 0x uh, right here and I snip it and I leave myself about four feet between the end of my fly line. This happens to be a Rio Euro nymphing line. More on that in a second. I use my Euro nymphing rods a lot for these setups. And this is just gradually tapering down. This isn't real stiff material right here. I need this to be thin and flexible. The thicker the butt section of the leader or the closer the indicator is to the fly line, the more current push you're going to have on that line and the more drag you're going to get. And then you're going to have to continually mend and mend and mend and your drifts won't really have that, that staying power. And that staying power is required for longer delicate drifts and soft currents. You get this done right, you're going to start catching a lot more trout, I promise you. So I run that down to about a 0x again. I tie a non-slip mono loop to a Rio tippet ring, and then I just run typically 5x tippet. That's my go-to. 5x tippet sinks very quickly, and it can hinge down and fall straight underneath that indicator. And I can actually fish a lot shorter tippets and shorter drops in deeper water because my line isn't strung out at an angle like this. I'm actually able to get it to drop right underneath. And then this indicator, will actually float because it's so light and delicate will actually float over towards the nymph like that so this setup is it's a tremendous advantage if i were indicator fishing for a million bucks i would fish this nine out of ten times you have great control it paces right in the drift it just seems to respond more quickly than any other type of indicator and again with the yarn experiment a little bit and find your own system for that but the new zealand system really is it's a cat. It, 
it's the cat's meow. I mean, just get the indicator kit. It's a much better system than the, the yarn indicators with the rubber O-rings. Whatever you do though, just make sure that this should be light, delicate, and buoyant. It should not get waterlogged or soggy. It should not be heavy, okay? I'm gonna end the, the video tip here with one more comment, and I'm gonna try to capture this on video and explain to you why the wind resistance on these indicators becomes such a huge advantage on the drift, okay? So let's put the camera right down on the water, and I'm gonna show you when you cast how a good nymphing drift with this should land. I'm gonna set my fly down first, and then my indicator is gonna parachute down very slowly, right on top of the nymph, allowing that nymph to fall. Then what I can do is I can actually set my fly down and I can pitch my indicator. Maybe I wanna pitch my indicator to the right, and I can set that thing down so soft, and I can actually control how it lands, and I can free men my fly, putting my fly in one spot, and my indicator in the other. And I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of you out there that have been kind of stuck in a rut, and there's that you need to change up a little, change it up a little bit. And there's a lot of you out there that probably think you're really good nymph fishermen, like I have at many points during my life. There's a lot more to learn out there. Experiment with this setup, and I think you'll be shocked at the control that you have and being able to manipulate where the fly lands versus where the indicator lands. Promised I wouldn't rattle on, but there's gonna be one more thing that I have to explain. If, you're, if your nymph setup hits with a taut leader and everything hits the surface at the same time, so my indicator hits the surface, my fly hits the surface, how most fly casts do, this nymph now has to swing itself all the way under there. It takes forever for that thing to sink, and you're gonna need a bunch of weight in order for it to do that. If you can set your fly down first and keep your indicator and your fly close together, that fly is gonna fall and you're gonna be fishing in a short period of time. Within 12 inches of drift, your fly is gonna be down to depth and starting to fish. So trust me, I make a living guiding. I've been doing this a long time. This setup is gonna give you an enormous advantage. So set it up and take the time to hone your craft a little bit and learn the system. There's that, just another look at that rig and how I have that set up. Now that New Zealand rig could be slid up the line, but I am going to fish that rig just like that, um, close to the terminal end of that butt section, which is about 0x. And then I've got my tippet ring tied on a hinge there down uh, to the fly. So that is my setup right there. Better look at it. Yarn decator setup that I was showing you guys when we were fishing looks fast here but we were fishing that really soft edge in these January conditions right there. Let's go ahead and bring it up, 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 up. Oh, it's a cutthroat. Very nice. That is, that is a beautiful fish and kind of unique down here in this area of the river. Congratulations, Mary. Thank nice you. job. That was a big reach. Holy smokes, Mary. Oh, wow. What did you do? <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful fish. Yeah, that's a dandy. Congratulations. Nice job. Now here we are. Catching trout. My cameraman, Nate, is using the same exact setup with that yarn indicator, that hinged yarn indicator rig. And look how short that leader is. That's three feet a leader. And we're fishing that really, really slow edge right there. And we uh, decided we were gonna try to San Juan worm on there. There's that yarn decator with the 90 degree tippet ring.